And how's it going guys, Joshua LaFemme here. And I know that a lot of the time I'm the one doing the tutorials, but behind the scenes, I'm actually watching a lot of tutorials. I'm in a lot of master classes. I feel like I'm a student most of the time. Right now I'm currently in two master classes by two really good friends I have. Number one is Koshik. I've known him for a very long time. Um, he's currently doing a really dope master class um, in the realm of talking about how to be an effective marketer, specifically in the field of video production. You're gonna be hearing from him more um, probably next week and then the week after that. It's gonna be awesome. I'm also in a second master class from a bro that I actually recently just met. His name's Yasik. I actually found his VFX master class on an Instagram ad. Hit him up and he is amazing. His courses are actually being featured over on Full Time Filmmaker with uh, Parker Walbeck. But we have the privilege of actually having him on the channel. You know, I talked to him. I was like, hey, bro, I love the way that you do tutorials. Could you please do a couple tutorials on my channel just to show people a little bit of what you're all about? Um, I'm going to give a link to his course that I'm doing down below in the description. I'm not making any money from this, just so you know. Um, I just simply think that he's a very talented guy that does tutorials in a different way. I'm going to tell you how he does tutorials and it's been convicting even for me. Usually when I create a tutorial, I'm very linear. I'm like, this is how you get from here to here. What he'll do and you'll see is he'll give you actually different options and then he'll then finally go to the main option that he feels like is the best option. And it makes his tutorials a little bit longer, just by a little bit. This tutorial is like 17 to 20 minutes, but I love how well rounded they seem at the very end. So I want you to test this out, try this out, test this tutorial out, see what you think. I think you're gonna love it. And then if you're interested, you can check out the VFX course down at the bottom that I'm currently taking. It's amazing. Yasik, the floor is yours. Hey there. First of all, thank you just so much for letting me be a guest on this channel. My name is Jacek Adamczyk and I am a filmmaker and VFX creator. I made a course specifically for filmmakers wanting to learn After Effects for visual effects. When Josh hit me up, we wanted to find some cool effects series for you guys and we found an awesome music video called Jain Makeba, I guess that's how you say it. If you haven't seen it yet, please do. It's super creative and I think everything that is in this video can be done using After Effects. So today we'll tackle this effect. So for this effect to work, we need a static shot or a photo of power lines. Of course, then to manipulate these lines, we'll need them on a separate layer and we'll need a background clean plate shot, of course. Once we have it on the separate layers, we can use expressions for the music to drive the displacement of these lines and we're basically done. Thanks for watching. No, just kidding. Let's jump into it. Okay, so we have our picture and I am going to drag it into a new composition, which is 1920 by 1080. So let's scale the picture down and let's pre-compose it. Okay, so now somehow we need to isolate our lines from our background layer. And there are actually a few ways we could duplicate this layer. And on the bottom one, use, for example, CC wire removal or clone stamp tool. But to be honest, I'm most comfortable with Photoshop. So I will use the FX console to grab a screenshot and then save to PNG. Once you did it, pull up the Photoshop, duplicate our layer for safety. So leave it as a backup, go to the top layer. And what I like to do is use the clone stamp tool. And I like to isolate the thing I am going to remove from the anything it's basically touching. Like in that case, anything that it intersects with other than the sky. We can even take care of edges. So now I select each and every one of them separately and use fill content aware and boom. If I have something left over, I just basically clean it up as well. And let's do it for all of the others. Now that it's done, file, export, export as PNG. Now let's pull it up in After Effects. And you can see underneath we have a layer without wires. And now in the top layer, we want to isolate lines. So to do that, I add Luma key key out brighter and then introduce the darkest part of the image slowly as much as I can without introducing anything else. Okay, looks good. Let's smooth 
the edge just a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. So now we want to get rid of this pole. So we only have these lines. So let's select the mask. Let's do it close to the pole. Select subtract as a mask mode and voila, we have only our lines on a separate layer. Awesome. So now we want to displace it. So what we could do is, for example, use the wave warp. And if we increase the wave height and width is exactly the effect we want, but with a minor detail, we don't really have any way of controlling the edges. So basically these fly off of the pole and go all over the place. We could use the pinning option to all edges and that way we have a smooth transition from here, but unfortunately not here because it's not the edge, it's just a mask. And there isn't any simple way to taper it off, so we have to give up on that. We will use displacement map. And the way displacement map works is it takes a grayscale image, which will be our map, and where it's 50% gray, it doesn't touch it. And where it's white or black, it either moves it up or down. Depends on how we set it. So now let's add a new base image and make it 50% gray. This will be our gray solid. But we want now to create a black, white, black, white displacement map. And this should result in a wave. So it goes up and down, up and down. So how can we do that? So let's create a new solid again, create a black solid and add a cool effect called Venetian blinds. Set transition completion to 50%, set width to maybe 70 and feather it just a little bit. If you're watching this video, you're probably a video editor and Envato Elements is a video editor's dream. It's a subscription service that gives you unlimited downloads of the most incredible stock footage like cloud and fog overlays, aerial footage, fire, lightning. They also have incredible VFX packs, Premiere and After Effects templates, sound effects, royalty-free music, and literally anything you could ever want as a video editor. Just by clicking the link below, you will automatically get a free first month. You'll see that coupon for the free first month at the very, very end after you've finished signing up. And that's it. I use Elements literally in some regard every day. Set transition completion to 50%, set width to maybe 70, and feather it just a little bit. We can adjust the direction, but for now, uh, this one is really fine. Okay, so now we got, let me turn off these layers, black, transparent, black, transparent. We don't want that, we want a white solid. So let's put the white solid underneath and this is what we have. So let me show you how the displacement map would work right now. So let's pre-compose it, call it waves, turn it off, let's add displacement map, let's pick our waves layer, set it to zero, zero, select luminance and luminance. So now we have basically almost the same situation. So you can see it basically flies off of our pole. So let me show you and turn down the opacity here to 50%, turn off the gray solid, and you can see where it's white, it goes up, where it's black, it goes down. Cool. So what we want right now is to have here black and white, black and white, and somewhere around here, we want it to become a 50% gray, so it tapers off and there is no displacement. And maybe the same here, it really depends on the situation. Turn off the opacity again to 100%. So let's delete the displacement map for now. Make sure no layer is selected. Click a pen tool and we will draw a shape. Cool. So now we will use this shape as our luma mat for our waves layer. So we will control where this layer shows up. But since we want to gradually taper it off, 
we want to have a grayscale image. So we want to have a gradient basically. But the standard gradient does not have that many controls. But what we can do is right click, layer styles, gradient overlay. And once we do that, we can go to gradient overlay, set it to reflected, change the angle to be basically perpendicular to this edge, basically so the perspective matches well. We can increase the scale just a little bit and also we can edit the gradient if we want, for example, for it to taper off somewhere here. We can even turn it even more so it would make sense. I think that looks pretty good. We can even push the white further. That's fine. So now we select our waves, go to track mat and select luma mat. This is how our waves layer looks like. So now we add to it our gray solid and this is how our displacement map will look like. So select all three, pre-compose, hide it. So now let's add a displacement map. Select our displacement map. Select luminance on both channels or rather both displacements. Set zero to first and second one. And if I increase the displacement, you can see, awesome. It's now exactly how our gradient looks. Just a little bit detached, but we can easily fix that. Go to displacement map, go to luma mat, show it, edit gradient overlay, and we can move the black further this way. Now we can turn off the luma mat, again, get back to it, and you can see, Voila, awesome. So now how do we drive our animation? So I will show you two ways. First one is what I don't think they did. So what I think they used basically hand animation. So the second way I will show you, but first I'll show you how to use a music to drive this effect. So now I have a really, really simple beat, which sounds like that. So now I can right click keyframe assistant and convert audio to keyframes. So what now happened is After Effects created three channels, left, right, and both. I can delete the first two, I won't use them. And now we have basically a slider effect with keyframes with different values. And we can see them on the graph editor. They go from zero in the beginning, somewhere in the middle, maybe six, seven, up to 47 is the highest. Great. So now let's set it to zero. We can reveal our slider. Alt click on our max vertical displacement and pick whip it to our slider directly. So this is how it looks. And you can see, yeah, it's cool, it works, but we don't really have any control over it. And I like control, especially over my effects. So what we will do is use an expression called linear. And I will type some numbers and then tell you what they mean. 10, 45, 0, 80. So what linear does is basically remaps values. It will take this effect, so our slider, because that's what we pointed it to, take these values from 10 to 45, so it will ignore basically anything below that value, and then remap these values from 0 to 80. So anything that's 10 will result in zero displacement. Anything that's 45, will result in the displacement of 80. I guess that's pixels, I think. And anything in between will obviously be in between. 
And now by changing these values, I can dictate how the wave behaves. So this is how it looks. If I decide that I want a bigger displacement, I can change it to 120. If I want it to react only to the highest bits, I can chop it down at 30. So it reacts only to the loudest noises. And yeah, that's how you make these lines react to the audio. But when I analyzed that video that they had, I figured I don't think that they used this way because this is way less regular than what they have. So let's delete that. Let's also delete the audio amplitude layer we created. Again, I'll click on max vertical displacement and type in math.sin time times 24 times 60. So what it is, is returns a sine wave. So values are smoothly switched from minus one to one and back 24 times a second. And then we multiply that minus one or one or anything between by 60. So you can see we have a pretty steady regular wave and we can manipulate, for example, the frequency. So it's a bit slower. We can control the amplitude and you can take a look at values. They go from 70 to minus 70. And the final look is up to your taste 100%. So now we want even more control. We want to be able to animate these. So we want this to not animate and then animate just a little bit and then stop gradually. To do that, we want to create a new null object. We call it control, add slider effect to it. And then in our expression, add times and pick whip the slider. So anything we have before will be multiplied by this value. So we can now manipulate this and what's more important, we can keyframe it. So let's change it to zero, add the keyframe. Now change it to one. Let's show keyframes. Go for example here, again, make a keyframe and then taper it off to zero. So we can control it in any way you want. So we can even increase it to two, so it will be two times as high or 1.5. And then it will go down to one and then to zero. And if you want to animate all three uh, lines separately, you would have to duplicate this layer two times and mask out every line to a separate layer. That's what they did. We won't do it right here because it's a really simple route to, to accomplish that effect, which you already know how to do. So now what we want is just a final touch. Let's add CC for motion blur. For example, change it to 15 samples and increase it to maybe 220. So it will be just a little more blurry than the standard motion blur. So this is how the final effect looks like. So yeah, that's basically it. You now have two ways of controlling this effect. And in case you want to change anything, like for example, maybe the length of this wave, go to displacement map, go to waves, and on the Venetian blinds, you can change the width of the wave. And boom, this is obviously an overkill, but doesn't matter, you can do whatever you want. So yeah, that's it. That's it for this effect. Keep an eye out because a few more videos are coming. 
Meanwhile, you can find my channel under my name, which is Jacek Adamczyk. I'll spell it for you right here. Also, you can check out the free webinar I have called Top 10 Things You Can Do in After Effects as a Filmmaker. Link will be in the description below, I think somewhere down there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hit me up with any questions you might have, and I'll see you in the next one. Yasik, thanks so much for sharing your expertise here on the Josh Olufemi channel. I'm definitely going to implement some of the stuff I learned in my next music video, and I hope all you guys watching will do the same thing. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Please remember to like and subscribe. There are two more videos that you can check out. And as always, remember to keep it chill.